Hi again everybody, welcome to part 5 in the IFC Manager and Root Server tutorial series. In this section we're going to move on to securing your root servers with IORDB filtering, IORDB Internet Routing Registry Database, uh, so filtering with IXP Manager. Uh, what we've covered so far is we've built a root server, we've demonstrated some clients connected and, and root propagation, we've done an IPv6 instance, we've done the looking glass, uh, and we've looked at how community filtering can affect the roots uh, and visualizing that with the looking glass. The last two bits in securing our root servers are going to be adding IORDB filtering and add, adding RPKI filtering. So IORDB filtering. Um, <clears throat> IORDB filtering uh, and RPKI are used to ensure that a root server participant, a client, a user of your root server can only advertise roots that they should be able to advertise. Should is a very loose word here. Uh, there are no guarantees. It is it is pretty easy to fake this if you are malicious, but as I said before, 99 plus percent of all issues at a root server are accidental, uh, and the way we configure root servers will stop pretty much all of those. So uh, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the concerns around should later as we get into more detail on this. Um, so Lears, uh, you know, local internet registries who get roots from a regional internet registry such as RIPE or APNIC, uh, they'll register uh, root objects with routing registries. So if I got a, 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 an IP allocation from RIPE, I would register a root object with RIPE uh, telling RIPE that I'm going to originate these, these prefixes from a particular AS number. The, there are the REARS own databases like APNICs and RIPES, but there's also commercial ones such as ORADB. Unfortunately, the quality of the records vary greatly. I know, for example, that RIPE uh, are very strict and do a great job in ensuring that their database is as good as can possibly be. Uh, others aren't so great, and particularly some of the, some of the sort of offshoot non-REAR ones are, aren't the best. Uh, but having said that, Internet Routing Registry database-based filtering has been and still is the standard for protecting root servers. This is an example of some root records, some IORDB records. Uh, the key element of this is that each root record has two pieces of important information. It's got the root and it's got the origin AS number. And this is what we're checking. When people advertise roots to us uh, into our root server, we want to check that there's a root object that matches the root that's been advertised and the, the origin AS that's, that comes along with that root. And we'll see that in a little while. So this is, this is how we try and check this. In terms of generating these prefix lists, um, ISP Manager uses a tool called BGPQ Tree. It's a great tool. Uh, you can pretty much apt get installed it on, on Ubuntu. Uh, and you can brew install it on Mac OS. So if I put in any uh, AS here, for example, INX's management LAN, I'm going to get back a set of prefixes for which root objects have been created. And in fact, if I go and do a who is on this, you can see here, there's my root object with my origin AS. Um, that's one, and there's, there's another one here with the origin AS that I actually queried. Um, the other thing you can do is give it a peering macro or an AS set. And it will unravel that AS set and get all of the prefixes. So if I, if I did a who is AS H E A net, I can see that that AS set is made up of a bunch of AS numbers and another AS set. So we recursively unravel those. Particularly what IXP Manager does is it sends this in with the J flag, sorry, capital J. No, no, lowercase J. Sorry, who is? Uh, BGP dash J AS H A N S. And that sends it back to me as a JSON object, which is what we parse in IXP Manager. So there's just a couple of examples for a V4 set and a V6 set in the slide deck there. Um, the the next thing when it comes, and we just saw it there with the with unraveling, it's important, you know, a, a lot of members of an, of an internet exchange might be LEAF members. They might just be a, 
small regional ISP or content or small content network. Uh, and they may not provide transit to any other downstream AS numbers. But that's not always the case. Uh, you could see here with HEANet, for example, uh, they provide downstream transit to a number of different ASs, uh, including another bunch of ASs. So uh, it's important that we uh, unravel uh, these AS sets. So in ISP Manager, when a member is configured with an AS set, such as HEANet, right, we're going to unravel that. When it's not configured, if there's no AS set, such as with this one, we just use the ASN. Okay, there's no AS set, so we just use the ASN directly. Um, so we do the right thing with FC Manager, and we build up, we try and build up a set of all of the prefixes and AS numbers. Uh, and how that's done is, uh, IXP Manager has a scheduler. So when you install IXP Manager, you will have installed a cron job that runs every minute. And that, that kicks off IXP Manager's uh, internal scheduler. Every six hours, the scheduler will do a full update of anyone that's configured for IO or DB filtering and, and refresh their prefixes and AS numbers. Uh, once that database is updated, that gets propagated to your root servers when that, uh, that API reconfigure script that we saw in the last, uh, in part three, uh, when that's run, we, 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 we reconfigure the root server. Uh, you don't need to worry about those two operations, updating the database and reconfiguring the root server, tripping over each other. They're transaction safe. Uh, they're all done in, in, in a transaction, so they won't trip over each other. You won't get uh, um, unexpected results. You can also do it manually via the UI. Now I'm going to purposely cause a problem here. I'm going to try and view the IORDB entries. And I get an error. And I get an error because it's telling me that I didn't configure this uh, this member to use IORDB filtering. So popping into his VLAN interface, I've got my root server client configured. I can now apply IORDB filtering. That is actually checked by default, but I unchecked them as part of this presentation so I could start without having it turned on to show you what happens when it gets turned on. Um, the allow more specifics, what that means is if you have a root object for a slash 16 IPv4 network, say, and let's say you advertise that as two slash 17s. If you didn't have root objects for the slash 17s, then they would be rejected unless that was checked. In, in We would advise not checking that where possible and instead have your members create root objects for the actual prefixes that they intend to announce. So I'm going to save those changes. And now if I try again uh, on, on my uh, command here, view update IORDB entries, okay. So I've got no IORDB prefixes for IPv4. I can try and update that now. And voila, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight prefixes. There we go. Query true BGPQ into the routing registry table. All right. Uh, similarly, for my AS numbers, none now. And if I query it, I get one. Perfect. Just what I was expecting. Uh, what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to pop into HEANet here. And I'm going to enable IORDB for this member. Maybe I'll just turn this on as well to show you the difference. Uh, okay, I've saved that. So the other thing in my slide deck, so manually via the UI or manually via the artisan command. Uh, so what that means is on my uh, on my IXP manager, so in serve IXP manager, where I've got IXP manager installed, I can run my artisan command and I can say I or, or DB update prefix this is all documented, of course, as usual. Uh, let's turn on full verbosity here. Okay, so we've added a bunch of prefixes there and a bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch of prefixes. And let's do the same thing again for ASNs. Okay, now we've added a bunch for HEA net, just the kind of ones we were expecting to see that we saw earlier on. So great. We've now got all of that stuff in the database. We've got... Uh, the 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 clients configured to use uh, IRDB filtering, and if I find HEA net here, is he the top one? Yeah, root server client HEA net. Uh, right now, we've got nothing for or, or for IRDB. 
Let's refresh this and look what's after happening. Make it a little bit bigger. So first thing I have is a check for the origin AS. And then I've got all of these prefixes. See this here? All of these prefixes. Which I check as well. Uh, one of the things to note is we said um, we said we we allowed more specific prefixes, and that's why you've got thirty two slash forty eight here slash forty eight because the slash forty eight is the is the most specific one that we will accept. If we try and find AS uh, Aptus, um, the other network that we just enabled, there we go. So there's no more specific there. There's no comma slash 48 on this one because we didn't allow more specifics for Aptus. Okay. So previous root server config when IRDB was disabled was what we just looked at, skipping or PKI check and uh, not configured for IRDB filtering. So what are the changes? So the changes are, first of all, we're now going to check the origin AS is in the neighbor's AS set. And this is critical. Uh, this is important, even if we're going to be doing RPKI filtering later. Uh, and in fact, you know, we might come back and, and talk about the sequence into this when we look at RPKI. Uh, the main thing here is we want to ensure that the, because remember what we're checking with IRDB is when we get a prefix advertised to the root server, we want to see if that prefix is now in that customer's set of prefixes. And if it is, we allow it. But we also want to make sure that the origin AS is correct, that that the, the member is allowed originate routes for other ASs. And that's done through the uh, done through the AS set, you know, AS that's H E A net, so where we get all of the ASs. So we make sure that the the AS that a route has been originated from is part of their AS set first. And then we check the prefix. Okay. So this is the AS check. We've got this set of all of the ASs. We check if the last AS is in the AS set. And if it is not, that's what the exclamation mark is, we mark that to be filtered because the origin AS is, 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 not, uh, is not correct. Um, we skip our PKI because we haven't enabled it. And now we move on to our prefix. So we have the list of all of the prefixes that we found for that member and stuck in our database. And a good example here was HEANet, lots of prefixes. Uh, and then we check to see if the network being advertised is in that set. If it is not, we mark this prefix to be filtered for IO or DB prefix filtering. Uh, and we know that for HEANet, we are doing strict prefix filtering because we didn't enable allow more specifics. So, uh, or uh, sorry for this particular member. So I or DB filtered strict, otherwise it would be loose. Uh, and then otherwise we're going to add a community to say an informational community to say that this has been I or DB checked and it's valid. Okay. So that's our I or DB filtering, a really critical part of root servers. Um, it, it is the, what we have relied on for the past nearly 15 years for securing root servers. So it's it's really important to know it, really important to understand it, and, and maybe read the documentation on docs.humanager.org. The main thing is, when it comes to IORDB, is that we are um, using the, the member's AS number or AS set to query the appropriate internet routing registry to find all of the prefixes that they should be able to originate from their peering session. And again, just remember when we're wondering about what database to check, when we create a member in XP Manager, uh, we set the IO or source, the IOR database. Uh, where is it here? Sorry. IORDB ripe. Okay. So we're we're telling we're telling XP Manager for this member, query the ripe internet routing registry. We can create internet routing registries here. So we can query multiple sources. Uh, and let's just have a quick look at members. If I was to add a member, one of the things I'm asked for is the IORDB source. And that's how XP Manager knows which internet routing registry to query for any particular member. So if your member is from Europe, typically it's RIPE. If it's from Asia, Pacific region, typically AP NIC. Uh, and then if it's sort of a global network, 
you might have to query something like or AAD or, or ADB or something like that. Uh, okay, so that that is the end of this part. One part left in this series, and that's going to be RPKI coming up next. Thanks again for watching.